All right, so the pre-lift walk is going down. I also have my trusty deadlift polo today because it is day four, week four, meaning we have the heaviest deadlift of the phase today. Um, and this will be the last day of the phase. So last week I did 821 for two. Um, this week, <laughs> I guess we'll see where we are. Um, I have a couple of things that kind of like piss me off, like coming into this session as well. Like last session, I know, um, you know, I was kind of like off the the whole like Bob thing. And this one, I have a couple of other like 120s and just like lifters in general that um, kind of like motivated me. But we still have another block of doubles, so I'm not going to go too crazy. But um, yeah, <laughs> I guess we'll see where we are. Feeling pretty good, feeling pretty warm. Actually, not even feeling like I'm coming down to the end of a phase here right now. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna walk for maybe another like three to five minutes and then get started with the session. So in terms of like what is motivating me or like annoying me, it's two things really, right? And I'll explain uh, like one each before each of the next two warm-ups, right? The first one is mid-lifters. <laughs> what I mean by that is like, I feel like in powerlifting, there are so many like lifters, not so many, but there are lifters who like people regard as like good who I see as just like, like, you're not that good. You know what I mean? Like lifters who like continuously, like every year after year, their total is like basically the same thing. And then they just happen to like win this competition or win that competition. And it's like, bro, like, that pisses me off, bro. <laughs> like that really, really pisses me off. But I think one of the reasons why it pisses me off is because because I've been in a position where like I haven't had many opportunities to compete on like big stages and everything like that, seeing these lifters who do have the opportunity, but they're just simply like not progressing and getting better and they're just getting by on like a, a good total, it's just like, uh, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I hate the fact that people think you all are good. I hate that, bro. Uh, right? And I'll tell you guys the next thing as well. But let me hit this. The second thing that kind of like motivating slash sometimes infuriating is any 120 kg lifter that like tries to like compare himself to me <laughs> and that might sound like the most like big headed thing ever but like sometimes like somebody might be like oh well um you know I, I, i'll deadlift you or i will um, I, I'm gonna outbench you or something. And then the person who says, okay, well, I'll deadlift you. It's like, well, where's your bench? Where's your squat? And then the person who says, okay, well, I'll bench you. is like, okay, well, where's your deadlift? Where's your squat? You know, and it's like, it's like, you all need to learn some respect, bro. Like, I, and it's like, it's all well and good. It's all well and good. By, by all means, say what you want. Please don't stop if you're watching this video because that just like, it just make me want to like, like just like, almost like, like disrespectfully out total you. That's what makes me want to do because it's like, oh my gosh, like do you really think with your total that starts with nine that you could, that we have something going on here? We, we don't, we don't, oh my gosh. Yeah, I think, uh, anyway, I, I'll talk before the next warm up.
so I will get back to my rant uh, probably like after the top set but right now this is the second to last warm up at 661 or 300 keys so the goal with this phase just in general on deadlifts is to set myself up for a huge um, PR double next phase so my current PR double is 860 or 390 keys and um, yeah the goal is to set myself up next phase to beat that so I did 821 or 372.5 last week so to see where we at this week I think in anywhere from like 385 all the way up to like actually matching my PR at 390 so yeah we see I'm just gonna take two more warm-ups this and then 782 which I think is 355 and then we'll see how that feels Pretty good. All right, so on the six sixty one, I definitely lost positioning just a little bit. So here with seven eighty two. I think, is this 782? Yeah, 782. Um, the goal is just gonna be to maintain good position and move it well. I'm not gonna be focused on speed as much, but just like positioning, because once my position is on point, <clears throat> then I'll pretty much be able to hit anything in that top set range um, today. So see how this goes, focus on the grip and the positioning. No. Yeah. Yeah, so that wasn't bad. Once again, I felt like if I lost positioning, I don't know if it's like my belt, because my belt feels a little bit loose, but moved our head for 782. So hmm, let me contemplate on this top set and you guys will see why I load. Okay, so unfortunately, 100 degree or like, I don't know, 40 degree Celsius garages and weights over 850 pounds don't gel well together. My thumbs, like coming out today, like straight off the ground, I kind of like felt very, um, like I didn't necessarily feel like super secure as I did with the first rep. But yeah, I don't know if it's just like the humidity see yeah, that freaking dripping right now or what but yeah i felt like if obviously the grip itself made the rep harder just in general but when i get to, got to the top i was like oh i could definitely like grind through this um and then 
yeah, it just I just didn't have the the grip for it. I can show you guys my hands. They're not in the best condition right now. But yeah, honestly, I'm pretty happy with that just because this is my first time pulling this kind of weight since um shit. Literally since my meet in September. So that's literally like at this point, what, almost six months ago, if not six months. So yeah, pretty happy to be able to do this. As I said, I still have doubles next phase. Um, I guess, honestly, pulling here, I may just have to like chalk up between reps or I'll probably just simply um, do the first rep and then um, just like strap up for the second rep. Um, because to me, the second rep, um, strap doesn't necessarily like take away from, um, like it doesn't take away from the carryover. I have to singles, right? So yeah, last time I pulled this, it was first rep hook, second rep straps. So maybe I was a little bit too ambitious doing, uh, boot reps hook, but yeah, I think we're definitely on track in my opinion, at least for 831 for a double next phase, just because the weight itself felt very, very comfortable. So, yeah, I'm gonna do 606 for four sets of four on the back downs. And uh, yeah, let me load it up. All right, last set here, 606. These back down sets are actually pretty hard. Like that grind on the second rep of the top set kind of like took it out of me. So my low back feels fried, but moving pretty easily. So should be able to finish this out strong here. Yeah? So obviously I feel the top set, right? And um, one of the things that I see that like really holds back a lot of like intermediate athletes or like even people who just on the verge of like becoming advanced is like the fear of failure when it comes to like top sets and stuff like that in the gym. You're gonna feel reps. Everyone feels reps. Some people show it. Some people don't. I remember my prep leading into my last meet. I had missed, I think it was 826 for a triple. Yeah, it was 826 for a triple. And I missed the third one. And I was like, damn, I ruined the prep. I'm not gonna have a good meet. My life is over, <laughs> you know? And um, right after that, I was able to like bounce back super, super quick for the next three phases and have like a perfect deadlift prep. So failure is not the end of the world. A lot of times the circumstances leading to failure, you know, maybe you went higher than you should have. Maybe it was like, am I in a technical issue? Maybe it was, you know, bad sleep, all these different things. And sometimes you don't know. Sometimes you just fail, you know? And a lot of times your response to that failure is critical. 
a lot of times the response to that failure is what determines how the outcome of that series of training blocks is going to be, you know. And the best response is always just to look internally, see how you can dig deep, see how you can dial things in, and just press forward and kind of like wipe that out your mind. You know, it's almost like it didn't even happen. Press forward and don't. Because a lot of people fail and then they end up just thinking like, oh, what if I feel this? What if I feel this? It's like, no, it's part of the journey. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, we have squats now. Uh, high bar pose squats. Um, pretty easy stuff, although it is the heaviest secondary squat day of the phase, because it's the last day of the phase. But um, what I was basically saying earlier, right? <laughs> and I was saying this with respect to like um, other lifters in the 120 and stuff like that. That stuff motivates me a lot because it's like, I feel like I've really proven myself. Like I totaled over a thousand kg as a 120 kg lifter twice, you know? And um, I, <laughs> nobody else, like the, the, the legend, you know, the best 120 kg lifter before me was Dennis Cornelius, right? And his best total was 978. My best total is 10.45. I didn't do it in the IPF, but that was my, that's my best total, right? And it's pretty much to the same standards, right? And it's just kind of like irked me when like, nobody else has even beaten Dennis Conley's record, so nobody else has totaled 9.78 or higher. Yet, people are always like, oh well, you know, coming for you, X, Y, Z, whatever. It's like, your total is, even if you were to beat the world record total, which is Dennis Cornelius, by 20 keys, and you total a thousand, you still have another 45 keys, 100 pounds to get to me, and I'm still getting stronger, you know? So, and, and, and what like irks me more about it is not necessarily even the rivalry or the competition or anything like that. It's just simply the fact that I don't have the opportunity right now to continue to put up big numbers. You know, like I saw Austin Perkins' performance uh, last night, Extraordinary total 839 um, in 74kg and you know room in the tank 7 for 7 they didn't even take two attempts one on bench one on deadlift and then Russell he he's going to compete this evening as well as like Gavin Aiden and Petrie then you have Ashton tomorrow then you have Bob on uh, on Sunday then you have a bunch of other like 120kg lifters um, competing over the weekend at the Euros and then um different things like that and it's just like oh my god bro like <laughs> it's, it's, it's like it's moved from being like a few videos ago i was just like discouraged and like oh woe is me etc to now it's just like infuriating to the point where it's like i almost feel like when i get back to the ipf i'm gonna have such like like a vengeance in my heart that is like <laughs> i don't even gonna be able to like control myself when it comes to like Oh, let me just hold back until, um, you know, Sheffield or anything like that. It's like, nah, I want to just come here and just disrespect everyone. Because in my mind, right, and <laughs> again, this is like an extremely, like, I guess, egotistical rant, right? But in my mind, it's like, of the 120 kg lifters, I only see one person right now who I could even kind of say, okay, this person is going to be competition for me in the future. And that is... Bob. Besides that, everybody else could be great. They could maybe break the world record total, but I could see Bob going over a thousand kg, well over a thousand kg, and getting close to me. And that's what's motivating me. Besides that, everybody else just like just go train, bro. Just go train. Just go get stronger. <laughs> you know, just go get stronger. Like, <sighs> yeah. Enough of that, though. Let me get to my squats. But I. Hmm. I said it in the last video and I'll say it again. When I when I get back to the IPF and I, and I, and I really just feeling like this now because of all the um, like meets happening and me like seeing everybody compete and not being able to be at any of these meets, you can imagine how like <laughs> that all that's like to me. But it's like when I get back to the IPF, bro. I'm right now and leading up till then, I'm doing everything in my power to ensure that that first meet 
is a statement and it's the only statement I need. After that first meet, all I want to hear is silence. That's all I want to hear. Top set here for six reps, 474, or I think four, 215 keys. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> Easy set of six. All right, so that's pretty much it for the squats and pretty much it for this workout in general. Um, I have just like two accessories, which will be good mornings and then uh, the contralateral split squat ISO holds for knee health. And uh, then I'll probably do some core and that'll be it. So I'm not gonna bore you guys with that. I've shown you that pretty much every deadlift workout this phase. But um, yeah, I'm gonna finish off quick and get ready to go watch Paul of American Nationals, Yabba Russ, Gavin, um, Angelo Fortino, and Petrie all competing today. So that should be pretty exciting to watch. So, next block is new opportunities to get stronger. Next block, honestly, I'm gonna say this now and then I'll put it. Um, when I actually do it, I'm gonna total 1000 kg for a double next phase. So, yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.